Hello everyone, welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 12 of Computer Science Principles. And today we are going to be looking at Digital Dilemmas, which is actually our final lesson for Unit 1. Um, after this lesson has been completed, you will be doing your assignment. Uh, oh, sorry, no, your assignment, your assessment. Um, this does say Part 1. I'm going to go and change that because it's no longer part one, I've combined part one and part two, so we just have a single digital dilemmas. Okay, so unit one, lesson 12, digital dilemmas. <clears throat> Let's take a look at what resources we're gonna be using for this lesson. Uh, so over in Google Classroom, we have the PowerPoint presentation that I'm presenting to you right now. We have athletes don't own their tattoos, we have DNA testing kit and the security risks in digitized DNA. And we have ethics of computer generated actors. So those are three news articles um, that we're going to be picking one of to use. Um, we have our post templates. I'll talk about that a little more. And our project rubric, which I'll speak to a little bit about as well. So those are the resources we're going to be using today. So let's go back to here. Uh, so let's talk about this. We're going to be asking the same question again later today, uh, later on in today's lesson. But for now, do you all think our world is better or worse because of digital representation? Um, myself, personally, working in IT, I would put us around about here you know if we didn't have digital representation um, life wouldn't be terrible but having the digital representation that we have having the ability to have digital audio digital video digital documentation the number of times I have opened a, a word document done a control F which is a sort of shortcut for search uh, to find something very specific in that document you know, if I had to refer back to a physical printed copy of that Word document and I had to search for the information I was looking for, I'd probably have to go to the index at the back. I'd have to find something that vaguely represents the item I'm looking for. It will send me to a page. I'd probably have to leaf through a few pages there to find the piece that I want. Control F makes my life so much easier. Uh, so for me, I would say digital representation um, has made my life, at the very least, a whole lot better. Uh, another example, I can my iTunes library. So um, all of my songs are in my iTunes library. I can get that on my phone. I can get that on my Mac. I can get that on my PC. When I'm driving, I connect my phone up to my car, and Apple CarPlay appears on my um, on my car radio, and I can find the songs through Apple CarPlay. You know, I have a digitized library and I can access those songs anywhere. Um, through Alexa, I can ask Alexa to play a specific song from Apple Music and she'll go ahead and play it, you know, from my library. Uh, so, again, for me, digital, you know, the digital world we live in, I think is great. <clears throat> so, today's activity digital dilemmas. And again, it's referenced in part one, but there is no part one. We're, we've combined everything into one here. <clears throat> so there's three digital articles that are, that I referenced before, the three PowerPoints. And I want you guys to go out to Google Classroom. Um, you can download all three of them if you want and have a quick, you know, I don't want you to read all three. Have a quick um, scan through it. We need to pick one of these that you're going to use. Um, so have a quick scan through each of them to see which one you're more interested in, uh, whether it's athletes don't own their own tattoos, uh, DNA testing kits and the security risk and digitalized DNA, or ethics and computer-generated actors. Go ahead and have a scan through them and then decide which one you would like to use for today's activity. Um, once you have done that, um, Go ahead and highlight, underline, so similar to what we did in the last lesson. So highlight and underline any information in this article that you want to know more about. And again, at the end, write a 10-word summary of the article. So let's go pick this first one, for instance. 
um, at the end here as you do your 10 word summary. So go ahead, scan through each of those three, uh, read through the one that you decided to work on, and then go ahead and do your 10 word summary. Pause this video and then come back once you've completed that. Okay, so any of those article, any of those items that you've highlighted that you want to know more about, uh, go ahead and look it up. Uh, Google it. Uh, check on Wikipedia. Um, make sure you're clear in your head with what those items or articles or uh, words or phrases are to make sure you're clear in your head about um, the entire article. So again, think. So going back to our first prompt, is our world better or worse because of digital representation? Um, and base your thoughts upon this on the article that you've just read. So reread the article again and answer the following questions as you go through. So what was digitized? What was the goal or purpose of digitizing that item that was digitized? Is someone benefiting from the digitization of that? And if so, who? Is someone being harmed in the digitization of that? And if so, again, who is being harmed? Are these impacts intended or unintended? So the harm, uh, is that intended or unintended? And how do you know? So what in the, in the text leads you to believe whether the harm was intended or not intended? And similar to what we did in the last lesson, add a plus to sentences that show benefit, add a negative to sentences that show harm, and add a face to sentences that show impact. And then new for this one leave comments in the margin and text of the article addressing the questions to the left so leave comments in the margin and text of the article addressing the questions to the left so you can put comments and notes in your article based on you know what these questions you know to answer these questions here uh, go ahead and pause the video and then come back once that's complete So position posters, if we go back to our resources for today's lesson, we have our position poster, I thought, uh, maybe I did not include the position poster. Okay, poster template should be this one, supporting poster template, did I not include that? Let me just refresh this page because I just sworn I included that. Let me see. Nope, I did not write. I'm adding that right now. Edit. Oh, it did. Here it is. Supporting post template. It is there. It's this one here. All right. So let's go and open the post template. It's this one here. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use this post template. I don't need to create it. Just know that. Top left is one, top right is two, bottom left is three, and bottom right is four. And in each of these four areas, we're going to write in the first quadrant, the first quarter, what is being digitized, how is this information represented digitally. And in the second quarter, what is the goal or purpose of digitizing it? And in our third quarter, what are the benefits and harms of digitizing it? And in the fourth quarter, is our world better or worse because of digital representation? And explain why, given examples from the article. And check the project rubric on before as you're working through building out your poster here. Project rubric is available from Google Classroom. Uh, it is this PDF here. So go ahead, and this tells you exactly what you need to do in order to gain full marks on this. So it gives you an example of extensive evidence versus no evidence. So full marks here on the left, uh, minimum to non-marks over on the right. 
And going back to our uh, position poster, here are the four things that we're going to be putting into each of the quadrants, one, two, three, and four. So go ahead and pause the video and work through that. And that should take you quite some time, 20 to 30 minutes to complete that, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, once that is complete, uh, unpause the video and we'll continue. So asking the same question as what we did right at the beginning of today's lesson, uh, where do you stand? Is our world better or worse because of digital representation? Um, so now that you've had a chance to read the article uh, that you've uh, looked at that that you've chosen, now you've had a chance to complete your position poster. Uh, where do you stand now? Um, are you still like for me? Am I still up here, or are you somewhere on the sliding scale here but towards worse or better? And then make sure that you put that in your position poster here. So mark on the scale here with some comments. Uh, and examples and wrap up for today do you think there is always both a benefit and a harm to digitizing analog content well I think we all know what the benefits are so if I have a digitized song it's much easier for me to transport I don't actually have to have a copy of it anymore I can save it up in the cloud you know, my iTunes library is up in the cloud I can access it from my any of my computers, from my phone, from my Alexa devices. Um, so that's the benefit. It's available anywhere. Now, is there a harm? Yes, to some extent there is a harm. You know, I could take that file and give it to somebody for free. Um, videos, I can download a video, I can distribute a video. Um, pirating, that's called pirating. Um, so there is a harm there. Um, it's making the um, the files, the content, the um, intellectual property, it's making it available to other people for free. And if you go back to the comments about Taylor Swift and removing her music from Spotify, uh, because uh, it, it's devaluing what the uh, what it is, I mean, that her music is being devalued because it's available for free. People forget that this is something that time and effort was put into and um, it devalues the content, it devalues the artist's time, it devalues the artist's talent, and it de de devalues the, um, the actual product that's being created, which is the song. Um, so I would say to some extent, there may always be some kind of harm. And our last prompt for today, why should we care about information being represented digitally? How does this impact you personally? Well, if your information is represented digitally, it is easier to get hold of. It's easier to store. It's easier to access. It's easier to get stolen. Um, somebody could get somebody's computer system could get hacked. So think about this. So, and you know, for school, your grades, your attendance, everything about you, your school. Um, information is stored on a computer system somewhere. So that makes it easy for the administrative team to go and see what your attendance was this year. Um, it makes it easy for your teachers to go and see what your grades were this year. It makes it easy to share that information with your parents. Um, my son and my daughter's school, they have a system where we get alerted if, our, if they are off or if an assignment gets missed or what their grades are. You know, that information automatically appears and we get notifications sent to our phones about it uh, and emails about it as well. So uh, that information is so much more readily available than what it was when I was at school. Problem there is, you know, what if somebody um, was to gain access, so as to gain un unauthorized access to that information? Um, what if somebody was to gain access to that information and um, unauthorized access to that information attempts to change your grades. Um, you know, how does that impact you personally? There, there is an impact there. Um, that information needs to be safeguarded. It needs to be protected um, sufficiently 
to remediate any impact that it would have on you. Um, digitization of medical records, digitization of DNA information. Um, so here's an example. Um, I've done some research into my family tree, and I think it would be great to um, take one of the DNA tests to determine um, where where I'm from, where my bloodline is from. Um, problem is, once that DNA information is captured and stored, it's stored digitally, and you have no control over it anymore. Uh, that information could turn up in a database. Um, you know, you, you, it's not your information anymore. You have no longer have control over it. Um, so there are definitely some impacts on the digital like digitization of information, um, medical information, school records, financial information. Your banks get hacked. What happens if a bank gets gets hacked? Um, so there are definite impacts to it. Um, companies need to look after the digital information that they have and make sure it's safeguarded. And that does not always happen. And that is the end for today. Uh, that is the end of Unit 1. Uh, you will have your Unit 1 assignment next. And good luck with that. I've looked at the questions. They are not terribly difficult. Uh, if you've understood everything that we've been through over the last over these lessons in the unit, you'll do absolutely fine. Uh, you'll be working with another one of the TEALS volunteer volunteers for the next unit and the subsequent units. I will be speaking to you again, I think, in Unit 10, where we will be talking about um, security. Um, until then, enjoy the rest of the units. Good luck in your exam and uh, your assessment, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye, everyone.